All right, um, what you see in front of you is uh, some items I acquired um, over the last month. Um, and yeah, it's all scattered on the floor because the garage is still a work in progress. So it doesn't have any um, any surface for me to lay the stuff out on and um, I'll show you guys. So I'm gonna cover all this stuff all the way over the floor, all the way back, starting over here. And we're gonna swing around and talk about that chair right there. Um, so, bear with me on this as the stuff is on the floor. Try to keep my foot out of the, the frame and try not to bump this uh, tripod. So, first thing we're gonna look at is this uh, Matco, um, Matco tools. I will say I tend not to buy that's, that's probably the wrong way to say it, but I don't have a lot of tool truck branded tools because I'm not a professional. Um, I've only ever seen those tool trucks driving around. And honestly, it wasn't until later in life where I started noticing them because before that, I certainly wasn't into tools. Um, not because I didn't want to be. It's just, I don't know, um, just not one of those things that was on my, my radar. Um, so I do notice them now. I see the snap, the snap on the Cornwell uh, I've seen Mac and Mac. I've seen all all four of them driving around. I haven't seen any of those uh, independent trucks like Gear Inch or anything. But anyway, I, I've seen this in a, a video before, and it's pretty interesting. I'm, I'm the type of person I like unique tools, um, for sure. Um, but what this is is a they call it a socket sledge. It's a five piece air hammer. You pretty much have a um, what do you got? You got 14, 14, 17. 19, 21, 22 millimeter. And um, you can see the edge of uh, the end of an uh, air hammer here, but you hook it up to your air hammer. It has the air hammer and attachment. Um, and you can um, pretty much go to town removing seize, seize fasteners um, at awkward angles, really. What is, what is marketed to be. So. I got this on eBay. Like I said, I don't typically buy um, tool professional, what do you call it? Tool truck branded tools, because again, I don't have a tool truck. I've never been on a tool truck. Um, and when I see stuff, I usually look and see if it's like a, a rebranded item, someone else is making it. Because the stuff that people talk about, um, warranty and all that stuff, I would say it doesn't really quite affect me to that extent because I'm not using this stuff day in and day out with the potential to open it. So, I have not, I mean, I've opened the plastic or the cardboard, but I have not opened the plastic. And what I was getting at earlier was the fact that I bought this stuff, I saw this stuff on eBay. And I, I just copied and pasted the, the part number into my uh, search engine. A Google search engine. And I saw the official Matco price of, uh, I want to say like three something, maybe three or four something, I don't, I don't quite recall, but certainly higher. I, I, um, I believe I, was this an offer or just a it might have been a flat like asking price of 250 but i ended up paying 250 for this guy so first time putting hands on it i like these trays well this one is fairly compact and i'll probably end up keeping it in there um, because it's, it's fairly compact Let's see if i can bring this in a little bit closer tilt this down a little bit Yeah, so these trays are really flimsy. But yeah, so I paid two fifty for it. As you can see, it's really floppy because you're supposed to get at it at an awkward angle. Um, and it's almost it's definitely a pass through design if you if you're concerned about that. Um, but these pins um, they do take a beating, so it looks like they give you additional pins here. They give you two additional pins in case you break them. Um, 
you can swap it out yourself because that's where that that awkward angle is going to be and obviously if you put something at this angle um, what have you but yeah um pretty beefy design um, chances are you're looking at suspension parts and stuff you know starting with 14 and stuff luckily this fits everything honda um has as far as suspension parts um Obviously, you need an air hammer to make this work. Um, so, yeah. So there's that. Like I said, the asking price wasn't something I was looking for. Certainly, I just came across it. If I'm being transparent, and I copied and pasted like I do everything. I never buy. The only time I, I buy something like. Um, immediately is if I think for instance like an eBay bid or something and for some reason I think it's gonna like you know, get sold out fast um, I'll buy it right away um, can't really see it but it says it's made in Taiwan here to Matco specifications I know that's always a concern for people um, they do have in my research they do have a, a manual impact one so if you don't want to use an air hammer you can use like a standard hammer um, to wail on it. So they do, they do have one. Um, so we'll push that to the side. Like I said, this stuff is on the floor, so um, bear with me as I go through this. Video might run long. I'm already almost seven minutes in and gone through one item, so I'll, I'll kind of speed it up. So what you're looking at, four boxes, four cardboard boxes. They're all Tecton. So... Um, what I have here is uh, their angled wrench sets, so 31 piece, and this is the SAE version. It goes from a quarter inch to two inch, and then I have the old, uh, the old metric, 27 piece, 60 to 50. Um, certainly didn't need all these larger sizes, but I just decided to get the complete set of each. Um, just to be done and over with it. Um, so you can see these are still in the plastic. Um, Tecton. Uh, this is a one and a half inch. So some pretty big, some pretty large wrenches. Pretty beefy, pretty quality. I like it. And then, so, like I said, I won't go through all of it. Then you got the, the smaller ones here. Um, they don't come with any type of uh, wrench holder. So they're pretty much just left loose like this. The, the smaller the smaller metric sizes so this is a 17 and a 16 so 30 I believe it's a 30 and 60 degree angle um, head on them and in that box let's see if I can get to it In this box, your, your larger sizes, this is a 41. So, by any means, is this, uh, was this cheap? I just, I just chalked up and uh, decided to get the entire set. Because I've been, I've been keeping an eye on it for a while and um, I was like, let me get it while I still have the, op the opportunity to get it. And of course, prices will forever go up. So, so it's going to be nice to get those in the, the toolbox. 
All right, 10 minutes in and we still got a lot to do. Um, but we'll make, we'll make progress. I probably have enough wrench. There's only, so I, I do have one, two, three, four sets of wrenches here that I've been keeping an eye on for the longest time and I've wanted to pick up. Um, partly because they're basically discontinued or impossible to find, but I found them. Um, so there's only one more set of wrenches that I can think of that I would like to have. Um, and it's the, I believe it's the Cornwall Double Flex. Again, not a tool truck guy or professional branded tool guy, but I do like unique wrenches because those have the double flex and I feel like you just never know when you would need that awkward um, contraption. So what I have here, focus on this one first, is uh, the SK. Obviously, people will talk about what happened with SK. I don't know the full backstory. Apparently they're no longer in the US or something, um, but this says it's made in the US, so I guess got the last of it. It's a fractional set, why buy a fractional set? Well, I gotta have a complete set of everything I get. Um, and you just never know when you'll need it. So three eighths to three quarter inch ratchet wrenches. Again, another eBay find. Um, it's still in a package, I'll just leave it as is. Um, just to get through this whole process. So there's that, and then of course we got the the metric sizes. The metric size goes from eight to 19, and it's, again, it's ratcheted in. Um, again, first time opening these. Comes in a very large tray that I'm probably not gonna keep because they will take up a lot of space. So. This is a 13 millimeter. You got a little hex angle on it. It doesn't have any reversible switch, but it's fine too. It's very fine, to be honest. Anyway, so there was that. The metric and the SAE. We got a little nifty way of keeping them in there. Part number on this one is uh, 80019 for the metric, and the part number on the SAE version is uh, 80049. That's what they're calling it. Um, so we'll kind of push that to the side, make way for my rolling creeper. Um, part number on the, the Maco stuff, let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. MST. MST S B A H M R R five R. So I'd say R. And then I believe I, I believe I got the part number on these. This is the S A E angled detection. That's the it's right over there. That's the metric version. Part number. They do separate them into those different boxes, but it's pretty, it's pretty much the same part number. Um, yeah. All right, 14 minutes in, crushing it. So again, SK wrenches, a unique set of wrenches that I kind of wanted for, for keepsake. Um, so, Here's one more that I found. And I've been watching this, and I swear it's like the last existing one. And the price was kind of stupid. Um, but I've been watching this for, it seems like a year, and apparently I'm the I'm the craziest person to, to buy it. Um, again, breaking into the, the packaging. But I've been watching it, I've been watching it, and finally I was like, you know what? If I don't get this now, I will never get, get it again. And again, this is one of those wrench set, wrench set. Again, the brand, and when this was probably released, it was probably like, I don't know, decently cheap. But for what I paid for it, it's kind of stupid. 
But let's see if I can get it in the, the frame. Maybe zoom out here. But it's the gear wrench. Um, let's see, six piece metric index and double box ratchet and wrench. So, and it's part number if you can find it, 85490. Um, comes with those sizes, 8 to 21. Um, so, here's gear wrench in their typical fashion. Um, the case, these things, I mean, you can see it, it just flops around. But that's the beauty of it that you can be in a, an awkward position, I guess, and somehow do this whole deal um, to whether undo a fastener or fasten it or back it off, back it in, um, whatever. Huh, okay. And it looks like it locks in place, so it doesn't just flop around. I just saw that, I didn't know it was locking. So yeah, it doesn't just flop around. So you just push this uh, button right here. And it just flops, locks in place. So that's pretty cool. All right. But yeah, like I said, this was one of those items that was on my radar, I saw it. Um, and just had to have it. And I only saw one for sale. Um, and it was actually on eBay and subsequently on, I found the actual website. It was cheaper on their actual website by about 50 bucks. So when I bought it from the website, um, I noticed it also disappeared from eBay. So yeah, this is a, a keeper set. Um, Something about blow molded case in these wasted space, man. This is like, it fits neatly in there, but it's such a wasted space. Um, particularly because I have a couple of those gear range set up and it's the same, same deal. All right, move along. Let's see, we'll talk about this first. This is another unique one came across and I only got it because it was um, an index and ratchet made in the USA 3 8 inch drive indexable ratchet uh, it says Armstrong industrial hand tools and gear wrench I guess they were one in the same I'm not a tool historian um, so I'm relatively new to the game but again one of those uh, awesome finds that I guess you don't really see a lot. Um, Armstrong USA, that's the part number. It looks like 11996. 11996 is what they're calling it. Um, 3H drive, as previously mentioned. Got this fine action here. And then you press this button and you can lock it in place. Um, Harbor Freight sells one. Um, I recently picked up one from Husky and eBay find that I think it needs a little bit of work to get it functional because it keeps like locking up. And then obviously I guess Gear Wrench Armstrong makes this one. And then I'm pretty sure all the professional top four, they all make something to, of equivalent. Uh, it looks like this piece is plastic right here. So not sure how well this will hold up, but it's also a three eighths with about a 12 inch or not 12 inch, maybe 10 inch handle or something. I don't know. But yeah, this is a, a awesome little find. It does shake around a little bit. It does have a lot of a little bit of a little bit of play in there, but not the end of the world, I guess. But if you again a unique ratchet where if you're in a tight spot, if you're in a tight spot, you can you know make make do make it happen. And that's what I like about unique tools. So we'll uh we'll put that in the inventory. 
Um, here's another tool that I've been looking for for a while. In fact, we'll talk about this one first. It's the Steelman Pro Cobras. Um, again, these things came out before my time and that before I was interested in tools. Um, and they were probably really cheap, but Steelman Pro Cobra, it's a 92 ratchet, quarter and drive with lifetime warranty. Um, I have maybe two or three of these because they're they're really hard to come by. I, don't, I wouldn't say these are really hard to come by, but the set is really hard to come by. And what I like about them is that they have this feature where they flex. They pretty much just flex on their own with lock and detents. Then you can um, push it up one and it locks it in place at that angle. Or you can just straighten it out and lock it full so it's a straight. So this is the quarter inch version. I do have the three inch version. If you've seen a video of mine, you've probably seen that before. Another eBay purchase. But I've been looking for this bad boy. It's the half inch version. Um, and I will say I'm not a half inch ratchet person. But um, I was curious about this one and I finally found it. I saw it once. I made a, the eBay seller an offer and he thought I was trying to like swindle him or something or you know give him less than it was worth and clearly they're definitely charging more for these ratchets just based on how limited um, they are but nonetheless saw it again and it was one of those where I was like all right let me pull the trigger um, and not like try to be you know try to win one over um, so half inch pretty much the same concept you know pull back this uh, sleeve all the way and it just floats with the indent, push it up halfway, it locks in place um, for those awkward angles. And then just, you just straighten it out and lock it in place with the, the breaker bar effect. Um, see, part number on this one is uh, 78631 is what they're calling this one. 78631, so awesome find. Something I don't like about these is the handles. Whereas the, I mean, the half inch here is, uh, the handle is not that bad, but when you get down to like the the quarter inch here, the handle is so small. It's like, what, what's the sense of this little Cobra head on it handle? You know what I'm saying? Cause it's like, I don't know. Anyway, here's the part number for this one. It's like 78629. And like I said, I have the three eighths version. Um, so additional ratchets to add to my collection. I might stop this video at some point in time just because it's kind of drawn out, kind of going slow, but also I don't have anything better else to do. So enjoy. Um, this is not a new purchase um, for me. I've had this for a while. Gear wrench, it was just sitting there. So I just grabbed it because I don't believe I ever showcased it. But it's a gear wrench, um, half inch, 120 XP electric torque wrench, wood angle. Um, it goes from two to 20 foot pounds. Um, as you can see, it's, it's really, it's never been used. Um, I do like this little foam insert that you can take it out. Um, but we'll leave it in there for now. Like I said, yeah, I'll close that up later. Like I said, um, had it for a while and uh, just came across it. All right, here's another wrench. So this brand, Urea, I've had, I believe I have one more item or this may be the first item I have in the brand. Actually, I know, I think I have some slightly offset ratchet wrenches from these guys. Um, but this is, um, what is this? Looks like, so this is called a five piece. It's a five piece double box ratchet and wrench set, 75 degree offset. So 
Again, another unique tool that I just had to have the part number right here is a 81M5M. Another unique tool I had to have, probably because it was hard to come by, I saw, again, just like the gear wrench, I saw it for the longest time and I held off because I was like, this is stupid expensive for what it is. But it's also unique and it's also in, limited to, to, to a quantity of one, if you will. Um, so I was like, you know what? It's either now or never, let me get it because it might be a discontinued item. And I don't really have a problem with getting discontinued items um, only because I don't break stuff that much. I've never had to warranty an item. Um, so without further ado, let's look at this. And then also for this wrench specifically, it's unique in the sense that, yeah, you have these offsets, but they're usually, um, they are usually um, fixed. This is the first offset, ratchet and offset I've ever seen. Um, and it has a switch right here just to change it back and forth. Certainly not something that that you're gonna have a lot of torque on. It's definitely, you know, use the appropriate size fix head, break the fastener, and then use this to kind of ratchet it to just improve your quality of life. So you don't sit there forever. Um, TBD on where these things hold up, but if I ever have to use them, I got them. And then they come in this little, yeah, decent tray. Um, again, these trays don't hold up for anything. So that's the urea. Also, it is spline drive in millimeters, in case you missed that. That over there. Moving along. Probably just gonna do this in one video just so I don't have a part two. Uh, can cut. It's a decent uh, manufacturer. Um, Come a little box. This is their carbon carbide bird set. Uh, one eight in shanks. Um, it's a twelve piece. I believe it's a twelve piece. Yeah, twelve piece. Carbide burr, small one. I'm supposed to get the bigger bigger set, but they're currently uh, sold out. Um, well, on the Ken Cut website, they're way more expensive, um, and they're half the price on JB Tools. So I'm waiting for JB to get them back in stock. Um, then I can pull the plug on it. Uh, unique little storage box. <laughs> um, the wooden storage box. I'll probably throw away this. It's gonna actually, we'll just leave it in there because I guess it keeps attention on it. Wish, I don't need that. There we go. Ready to put it to work if I ever need some cardboard, carbide birds, not birds, burrs. Anyway, um, these are just some angle polishers, um, uh, not polish, well, yeah, polisher um, cutting pads. So a mix of Milwaukee and um, Ryobi. Um, so that's what those are. Um, I'll show you later, but I do have, I picked up the DA Sanders, or DA polishers. Um, from Milwaukee, so that's why I got those. All right, moving along. 30 minutes in, doing it. VIM out of Tampa, Florida. This is their two-piece heavy-duty carbide tip scraper set. Um, saw these, honestly, I was never the type of person to, you know, be all about color, but now I have a green toolbox and I, I tend to gravitate towards green tools. So this is their Vim carbide scraper. Part numbers, um, CS101, CS102. Um, there you go. Carbide tip. So we got those and then we got the original super scrapers. So this is um, SS 
five, then SS five S, and then of course we got you know the original OGs. Um, so I got a couple of so for these uh, super scrapers at this point. Um, not something that you're gonna go through or you're gonna finish. This will last me a lifetime. Um, I don't think I had the small one though. I believe I've seen this um, from Lyle. But this is the first. I believe I do have this one and these two, but this is the first time I've had seen a small one. Picked her up. Uh, what else? Out of, out of Iowa, Cedar Rapids. Never been. So we'll get those um, out of the package. What else do we got here? Some um, O2 sensor, Lambaya, Lambada, Lambda. I don't know how you say that, but um, again, designed for use with an air hammer. An air, ha air hammer is such a versatile tool. Uh, designed to allow the use of an air hammer to loosen stock 22 millimeter Lombardi sockets sensors. Sorry. Uh, use air hammer for extraction only for fit and use 3HD tool. So this is obviously a uh, all the Nelson branded part number CT4389. Um, two sensor sockets are, are notorious. Lombada sockets are notorious, but this gives you a, an advantage just like those uh, Matco units over there, which I'm pretty sure you could use at 22 millimeter if you needed to, but same concept. This just allows you to get in there and uh, use an air hammer on it. So two part, two pieces to this puzzle um, and you can also use a breaker bar. This looks like a, why does it look like a quarter inch? But anyway. Pretty much the same thing. It's a 10 millimeter. Shaft diameter. Suitable for oxygen sensors. Oxygen sensors. This is a part number for this one. Get my foot out the the view here. This just gives me actually gives me an opportunity to clean up this garage floor. This one has like a um, what do you call this a pry not a pry bar and it's a breaker bar design um, where you can just lock that in at that angle air hammer is going to be short so get that impact and force in there if you break the spin you're out of luck though um, to break those rusty um, fasteners recommend preheating those um, pre-treating them with um, some kind of um, penetrant uh, let it sit overnight and then knock it loose or just go for it be a boss Milwaukee uh, what is it? What are these 2.5 high output batteries I got two of them as part of the as part of the, the Milwaukee stuff I'll talk about here in a second additional can cut so this is their five piece Uh, HSS carbide tip bits jobber length. So, so this is the right-handed version. I have the left-handed version inbound. Should be here next week. And these things are 
a beast. All right, there we go. Made in the USA. Used for extract and stuff. Pretty nice. Like I said, I have the left-handed ones coming in. Um, it does give you instructions. Um, use heavy amount of oil and use a uh, low RPM with high pressure. And then it recommends you using it in a drill press. But you can also use it on a handheld drill. But can cut is um, pretty nice, really quality. Um, I do like the, the bright orange uh, engraving or the stamp metal. And this is a uh, 116 to a uh, quarter inch by way of uh, 164. So there's, there's that. And then this bad boy, again, their HS, HSS twist drill. And this is the stubby dent. Um, Again, you just never know when you'll need um, a shorter size um, drill bit just to, you know, make it work. So you got all these sizes. And these, I mean, these are just kind of stubby. I do have their hyper step bits. And I also do like this cushion right here. So when they're like slamming forward, my hyperstep bits, they just slam forward and they hit the case. I mean, it's just a bunch of noise. So I do like the design of putting a foam, foam right there. Simple but effective. All right, we're getting after it. We're getting there. So a few more things to go and it should be pretty fast actually. Um, We'll just kind of lift the camera up a little bit here. So with my new lift, in fact, I got to do the wife's oil change this maybe tomorrow, to be honest. But I do have a OEM oil drain, elevated oil drain, and I bought this to cut it down. This is, I believe this is 24 inches. I believe, so I bought it to cut it down to fit in this circular one. Um, but I also bought the the square pen, if you will, just to have a larger um, catchment area, drain area. Um, so I'm probably not going to cut this anymore, but at least this will prevent any type of splatter. Um, so there's that. Uh, we'll talk about this big guy since we're here. So... Um, You've probably seen my, what do you call it? Floor crane, cherry picker, whatever you want to call it. Uh, heavy duty OTC over there. That's a 2,000 pound capacity. Well, um, this is a, uh, a load tilter or load level, load leveler. Yeah, so it's a 6,000 pound load tilter um, from OTC. Um, story, I purchased the, they, they had a 10,000 pound capacity one, um, found it on Amazon for a really decent price. Not cheap by any means, but decent price compared to, you know, other um, asking price. And it has been over a year at this point. That stuff has been on um, back order, but, the price has been going up, um, and if they ever find one in their inventory, I'm pretty sure it will be coming to me. So I'll just uh, I'll keep that order open on Amazon. Um, it's just sitting in my wife's account, um, and that money is already spent and accounted for. So if they ever say they can't fulfill the order, well, I guess I'm getting myself a refund of sorts. Um, whatever. So load leveler part number on this one is one six one one six one two i believe the ten thousand pounds is one six one three but basically you attach it to like you know your engine crane or something your your cherry picker 
And then when you go to lift the engine, you can use these um, set screws um, to um, shift the load left to right to tilt it. And you can put a, this looks like a 24 millimeter. You can put an impact on here and run it down or run it left to right. Um, then you also have these hooks that you can, you can hook a chain into, you know, to the appropriate length. Um, then you got these positive um, grade eight hooks that you can use, you got two of them. So again, another eBay find, um, again, I saw this. You can find these upwards of $3,000 um, just based on how the, the back order is um, or inventory of these is like low to none. Um, recently I checked, I saw one for three grand, a second one for like 16 or 1500 bucks. Um, this was an eBay auction. I saw it. It was one of those purchases where I know it would go fast. They were asking a thousand. I just didn't want to insult them. So I said 750, they accepted. And, um, with taxes and shipping, it almost ended up coming back out to, um, almost a thousand dollars. So pretty good score. Um. It's obviously new. I wasn't sure what I was gonna get, but the manual is over there in you know standard OTC fashion where you have like limited, or not limited, lifetime warranty on this stuff. Super heavy. This thing is about, I don't know how, this thing is about well over, this thing is about 80 pounds. Um, I'm not joking. Um, in fact, I'm gonna get my uh, engine hoist hooked up and I'll do a video just hook this up just for demo purposes. But if you're taking out a, a heavy block or something, get this. Someone will say it for me, I'm not gonna lift the engine anytime soon, but the the cool thing about this is that this is a set screw. That one right there, and this one is a set screw, and this thing telescopes. So um, most of these are just, are, they're just fixed in place. Um, so this thing actually telescopes, and you can um, adjust it. When, if you remove those test screws. So I'll probably do a video on that um, just to see, because I haven't undone, I haven't um, removed it yet. But for me, I always use stuff for more than its intended purpose. Um, like if I got to lift something up that's heavy, best believe I can use this to span the width of the item and lift from both ends of it. Um, case in point, that drill press over there. If I ever have to lift that thing because the wheels are busted, when I'm painting the walls or something, which I have to do, I'll be able to span this thing and I'll be able to lift it evenly and safely using my, my floor crane over there. Um, so some people will say, oh, it's overkill, DIY, why would you need it? If you have the money, spend it on it uh, if you so desire, but <laughs> I have seen the cheap ones of these um, and they're comical at best. Um, yeah. With the purchase of any new tool, every new tool that you buy, you're gonna purchase something else to, to support that tool um, or to make that tool functional. So I got this lift and then I realized, oh, I got light in here, um, you know? And then I was like, oh, lift the car up and then I can't see onto the car. So I had to get myself a, I'm sorry about my feet getting, my foot getting in the, in the frame here. I had to get myself these uh, Milwaukee, what do you call these bad boys, under lights. So I got two of them. One is out of the box, just so you can see it. Um, so I got two of them. So I'm gonna be, I'll be putting these to work, hanging them on the lift right there. Um, especially when I do the oil change on the wires car and all the little tune-up services that I typically do when I get around to doing that stuff. Anyway, video's going long, we'll keep it going fast. So I got two of those bad boys. Then I got, um, not really gonna talk much about these, but I got a 15 millimeter random orbital polisher from old Milwaukee, and then that's the 22 millimeter. Something I noticed um, without even having to use these before or much experience with any of these, I don't like that, I, I wish this knob on the front was a little bit bigger. Um, no reason why they they gave you a knob and it's like I mean I don't know that was just Leary observation out of out of the box so I got these bad boys um, 
can put a battery on it, make sure they function. And that's it for that. Um, these guys, I believe they're a small company. Uh, uh, P2R Power Rev Racing. Um, but just some um, some uh, seal like if, some stuff for rear main seal, um, crank seals and stuff for Honda um, crankshafts and all this stuff. So this box just contains some seal drivers. But what I want to say about this company here is shipping was fast and the packaging was. The, 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 they took they took pride in their packaging. I mean, they at least have some tape that represents their their company, and I was I was thoroughly impressed by their packaging. Um, you can see it's, these are just seal drivers. You know, if you gotta get that there, rear main seals and all this stuff. So. Um, picked up that from that company supporting a local company not a local because I'm not sure where exactly they're out of but supporting a, a young company if you will so I think we covered all this mess and we're nearing an hour not an hour, 50 minutes covered all this mess on the floor and then we're just going to walk over here real quick so Again, with a new lift or with a new tool comes the need to have additional new tools. And this was one where I was like on the fence.